Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over an upcoming very big winter storm potentially for portions of the Great Lakes. There have been many models indicating some sort of storm within this area over the past a couple of days and we're going to be discussing four different models with the GFS, the GFS Parallel, the Canadian and the European model are all showing for this event. We'll show you what they're showing in terms of precipitation and also their snowfall and we'll kind of discuss what's going on with the storm, what is happening in the upper atmosphere that's a allowing the storm to move through so we're going to be talking about all of that also if you live in portions of the northeast yesterday i made a post on uh, my youtube community tab about a potential clipper system that might give you an inch or two in some areas so if you are in that area go check that out on my community tab on youtube also if you would like a personal forecast for your area just leave your area in the comments and i'll uh, respond back to you usually within an hour or two i like to be quite speedy with my responses so if you do want a personal forecast, leave a comment down uh, a comment down below, and I'll definitely get to you. Uh, this is going to be mainly more of a discussion and me talking about what I'm looking at in terms of the models and not really a specific forecast because there is still so much uncertainty. And also, uh, as always, leave a like so it gets out to more people, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so you never miss another upload. So let's get right into it here, and let's start off with your current National Weather Service page, and we'll go from west to east. So... We have some high surf uh, advisories in effect for portions of uh, the west coast of Washington, Oregon, and northwestern California, as well as some of the northern uh, uh, Hawaiian islands there. We're also looking at some air quality alerts in effect for portions of the northwest and some dense fog advisories in effect for portions of Oregon with, I believe, those are freezing fog advisories in effect for portions of southwestern Oregon as well. High wind warnings are also in effect for northern northern Montana with some winter weather advisories in effect for parts of Washington. We see some red flag warnings in effect for portions of California and some high wind warnings in effect for California as well. We also see uh, for portions of Florida and Georgia some frost advisories. Your temperatures might get down to the mid-30s or the upper 30s uh, tonight. So definitely watch out for that if you do live within that area. And also for Alaska, we are looking at some winter weather advisories in effect for uh, the northern part of Alaska as well as some wind advisories in the southeastern corner of Alaska and uh, generally just some uh, high seas watches in effect for portions of the offshore coastal water. So let's get right into it with your current GFS model one and what it's showing now point your eyes to this little area of disturbance down here in Texas now we have this little area right here and then we have another area of energy up here these two are either going to interact or stay separate and that's what all these models are trying to figure out now by this time this is by fr uh, Friday morning into uh, so Thursday night into Friday morning uh, of this week so uh, this is fairly uh, fairly uh, close to right now we're dealing with only about two or three days out but we still have a lot to figure out within the models now here is uh, what happens with this storm it pulls away to the north. We see some uh, thunderstorm activity develop as you get further to the south in portions of the south central United States. And then it tries to go around this big high pressure system out over the Atlantic, which is spinning kind of like this, pushing the storm uh, further to the north and to the east. Uh, and it's pushing the storm right up. Uh, this way, we have a bigger trough that's trying to dig down further to the west. So it's kind of getting squeezed in this little narrow area where it can kind of go through, which would be... Uh, this general region right here. This is the storm tracks uh, area and it can go anywhere within here but because of that high pressure out to the west and that trough out to the uh, or that that high pressure out to the east and the trough out to the west it's only compressed to that thin little area according to the GFS model. So let's see what the uh, GFS does with this storm. It starts developing snow on that very northern end of here. Here would be by Saturday morning we're dealing with heavy snow for portions of northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin, northern Mich Michigan and also into portions of Missouri, Kansas, and Oklahoma. Now, here to be by Saturday early afternoon and getting through the later evening hours, it is starting to progress a little bit further to the east. Uh, that trough is digging down fairly sharply into portions of the uh, eastern United States, and I would say actually more of the central United States by this point. So you have a very cold upper air pattern for portions of the central U.S. You actually have a rather mild one uh, through the eastern United States, but once this system moves out, it'll definitely turn a lot cooler again. And a lot of people were saying actually on my video, 
video I made a couple days ago uh, that you're looking at 50s or 60s um, in the next four days. How could you be calling for colder temperatures? Well, it's actually going to be mainly because you're probably going to have two or three days of cold air and then maybe one or two days of warm air ahead of a system and then another system goes through. You get some more cold air on that back end. So overall, you will have a couple of warmer days, but generally it'll probably average out to slightly below normal to moderately below below normal for the entire month uh, if you were to average that out. So that's just something that I want to uh, kind of go over. You will have a couple of warm days, but definitely I think the majority of your days will be cooler and we're already seeing that for much of the eastern U.S. So here would be by Sunday early in the morning. Here's through the later morning and it's really heading out by this point. And then behind there, we have some very, very cold air uh, in place. So Here's what the GFS parallel model is showing for this event. We're dealing with that system out through portions of the central plains where you're looking at some precipitation setting up. And you can see that cold air already setting up behind the system. And we see that high pressure a little bit further to the east than what the GFS model, or a little bit further to the west than what the GFS model was showing uh, previously. Now, here to be by Saturday, uh, or actually this would be Friday night into Saturday morning. We're dealing with some snow as you get further to the north, and you can see this is a much further north track, but the GFS parallel model is actually going to develop another system behind this one uh, that kind of general generates on that southern end of that front and pushes back up to the north. So the GFS parallel definitely has a much more complex system. Now here to be by Saturday morning, and as we go through the day on Saturday, you start to see a little bit more energy starts to transpire over portions of the southern United States, a big general area of disorganized activity that is going to try and form and kind of take a fairly similar route uh, up to the north and east uh, as we get through the day on Saturday and then into Sunday. So you see those two areas of colder air and moist air move and kind of collide together over portions of the south central United States. Here would be by Sunday uh, and we're dealing with another system taking a fairly similar track to what we were dealing with before and bringing some of these areas a little bit more snowfall here to be by Sunday uh, in the evening hours and then through Monday morning it is getting very very cold by this point and just to give you an, a hint of how cold this is here's your jet stream by the same point so this would be by Monday morning on the GFS parallel model if this were to be true we're dealing with a jet stream that has a big dip uh, just through parts of the central United States and again as that system moves through that jet stream uh, or that dip in the jet stream will cover much of the eastern United States states as a whole so you're going back into that cooler pattern here are your temperatures by this point uh in that same time period monday morning uh december 14th and we're looking at some more uh single digits below zero as you get further to the north and west and some teens as you get further uh, a little bit further to the south but still not that far to the south so we are dealing with uh, we are dealing with a very cold pattern if this were to set up and behind the system you are dealing with that war or the more of that colder air but ahead of that system look at that we have some actually quite mild temperatures temperatures in the 50s and 60s along the east coast so it's going to be really a couple hundred miles difference between that very cold air and that very warm air for this time of year so Here's by Monday evening, and the system is really starting to wrap up. Maybe some lake effect snow on that backhand side, but other than that, nothing too major. Now, here's what the Canadian model is showing, and then we'll show you the European model. We're dealing with that system over portions of Texas and Oklahoma, and then that pushes up to the north, uh, kind of gets a little bit of cold air mixed in there because of that already uh, fairly strong trough that's dipped down into the central United States by this point, and that system rides through portions of uh, Missouri and then eventually into Illinois, Indiana, and it continues to put snow on that northwestern side. This is a little bit further north than what both the GFS parallel and the GFS model were showing, uh, and this is definitely a little bit further north of a solution, but the Canadian has a very interesting second half of the storm, which we'll show you in just a moment. So we're seeing the system really uh, starting to move off to the north and to the east, so most of that snow is up into Canada and portions of the northern Great lakes by this point but notice what's happening down here we're getting a secondary system to start developing and that'll actually head up to the north and to the east according to what the canadian model is doing uh the canadian model reforms this system it doesn't have any system come out of the southern rockies which 
means that it has nothing to steer it up to the north and east. So what it's actually going to end up doing is staying on that south side of the system and pulling away as a nor'easter and potentially bringing some snow if that were to be the case. And I'm not saying it is going to be the case. I'm just showing you what possibilities are there. So here would be by Saturday night. Here's by Sunday morning. And we see that system start to redevelop over the southeast. You get a line of moisture to set up uh, with that cold air still in place. And you do get some snowfall if that were to be the case by next Monday. So this would be Monday the 14th. And we're looking at potentially some snow if this were to be the case. Now, don't put too much stock into this because uh, definitely the models are going to change. Uh, but just to kind of show you, we th this isn't just a one model case. This is what the Icon model does with that same storm. It's much bigger of a scenario, but it, it's still there. So we have to take this into account. There are definitely a lot of models running around, uh, a lot of storms mo uh, running around within the models. So it's definitely taking a toll on these models. They're not performing as they should be and they're not as good as they once were. So uh, definitely these models have really been quite poor this year. So don't take too much stock into this. I just want to show you what could happen in a type of pattern in this, in this type of pattern that we're in so Here's what the European model is showing. We see that area of moisture over portions of the plains and into portions of the Rockies. That general disorganized area of moisture is going to head up to the north and to the east and develop into a storm. So here would be by Friday night. Here's by Saturday morning. That system is just kind of stalling out over portions of Missouri and Illinois and just pumping out snow as you go further to the north over portions of Iowa, uh, Nebraska, Kansas, those areas. And then it continues to head a little little bit eastward it's still a fairly slow moving system by this point here's by saturday evening here's by sunday morning uh and that's and that snow is still uh going over portions of missouri illinois wisconsin michigan uh and into portions of the northeast there and then the system really starts to shift further north and east. That, ra that rain and warmer sector of the storm is starting to push further to the north. But also notice that behind the system, even though you're dealing with very warm temperatures ahead of it, you're also going to be dealing with some very cold temperatures behind it. So uh, it's kind of a couple days of warm and then a couple days of cold, kind of like what I was talking about a little bit earlier. Uh, so you will definitely get into some of that colder air later and after that system departs. Uh, and then that system continues to head off further to the east uh, and you can see that second system that uh, that the uh, Canadian model and the icon model were showing is still being formed on the European model uh, and the European model takes us off the shore and doesn't really affect anywhere with snow but it's definitely interesting that all the models are showing some sort of storm it's just the exact track that we're still trying to figure out uh, but there's still a lot of variables that can change and that's definitely something that we're gonna have to look into later now here would be what the European model is showing for snowfall and it's quite bullish actually it's showing maybe closer to 20 to 22 inches in some areas I think that's a little bit overdone uh, so uh, definitely take these with a grain of salt but right now what I'm not really focusing on is the intensity or how much snowfall it's putting out it's where is that snowfall setting up because in these types of situations we can see a really really tight rain snow transition line for example portions of northwestern Indiana getting into maybe an inch or so and and northeastern Illinois may be getting 20 inches on this model run. So you can see definitely we have a very, very sharp gradient. And that's something that's uh, definitely going to make a tricky forecast. Here's what the GFS shows. And the system, uh, if you can't really tell here, is the system is uh, really only pumping out snow for these areas. And you uh, you also see some snow for the interior and northeast with uh, some of that higher elevation and higher terrain getting it to some of that snowfall. But the GFS definitely isn't showing as much snowfall as the Euro. And then here's what the Canadian model is showing. Uh, and it's kind of on board with what the uh, European model was showing in terms of storm track. It's just a lot uh, more died down. It's not showing as much snowfall. And then here's what the GFS parallel is showing. Similar track to the Canadian and the European model, but it is shifted a little bit further to the south and to the east. So now portions of Michigan are, are seeing the uh, highest snowfall total. So definitely we still have a lot to go over. 
I'm going to probably update you guys a couple more times on the storm. Uh, and definitely today's video was not a forecast. I always like to say this with these types of videos. Uh, so I'm definitely not forecasting anything in today's video. When I do put out my stuff a forecast for the storm, then you can kind of judge me on how well that one does. But this is just me discussing what the models are showing, giving you, giving you a potential outlook for what could happen, and just generally discussing uh, the types of things that I'm looking at with the storm, not really giving you a forecast, just kind of discussing what could happen with the storm so if you did enjoy the content make sure that you are subscribed if you aren't already make sure you are liking the video and make sure you also have your notifications turned on because we do make daily uploads and you would not want to miss them uh, and if also you, if you do want a personal forecast leave a comment down below with your general area and I'll uh, leave you a comment back usually within an hour or two if you respond of you respond of you are uh, commenting and I'll try and uh, get you a uh, at least a discussion or a forecast back uh, and those are usually handwritten so uh, definitely if you do want a forecast leave a comment down below subscribe turn on your notifications and I'll see you guys in the next one goodbye